Hey guys, welcome back. Today's lesson is on mitts and wisdom sticks. And uh, those of you at the dojo know that the wisdom stick is basically just a kicking target, which we're going to show you how to use here later on in this video. So we're actually filming on location at Justin's garage here. And uh, he's going to be helping us out. He's a great martial artist. And he's going to show us uh, how to use the mitts. And many of you guys have these at home. So if you don't, you can obviously use your hands as long as you're careful. But either way, you definitely want to be careful uh, when uh, you're working with a partner. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, how these mitts work. So we're going to go ahead and get in a fighting stance. And uh, Justin's going to use a front hand here. He's going to use a back hand right here, just like that. Now, when you're using the mitts, you want to make sure that when you put it up, you're going to expect for your partner to shoot out that move. So you never want to put that mitt in front of your face or put it up when you're not ready because something bad could happen. So you only ever put up the mitt when you're ready to go ahead and, and let your, your, your partner strike it. So again, one, two, just like that. And notice how I put them away. So I'm not gonna keep them up. If I keep them up, that's telling my partner that it's okay for him to hit it. So if I left them up, it'd look like this. Just like that, and I put them away. So you wanna be careful about that even when you're kicking. You never wanna put up the mitt if you don't expect for them to kick because this is the signal for him to kick. Or if I put it up and I take it away, it could be disastrous. So make sure when you're using this that you're, you're really alert and aware. So we're gonna put that up just like that and he executes it with good form. So if you're the individual that's striking the mitt, you always wanna make sure that you're doing it with good strong form, just like how Justin's doing here. Let's go ahead and do it again. We can also go low just like this. We can try the other side here. We can go ahead and go low on this side. We can change it to a hook here. So you've seen them cycle through various techniques. So you wanna do those different techniques uh, that you're capable of doing on a, on a high level. You don't wanna try anything that maybe you're not ready for. You can try those on your own before you work with a partner. So you can obviously move around a little bit, have a nice bouncing rhythm. Two, he can block. He can be here just like that. Notice how I don't put this mid up though, because if I do, he's gonna hit it. So I'll make sure that he's gonna block and then I'll allow him to counter back on a strike like that, make him block again. I can move around a little bit, make him miss, make him cover, make him miss, make him cover, just like that. So there's some little drills that you guys can do at home uh, with somebody that you, you know and trust that is alert and aware that can use some of these myths. So we'll go ahead and we'll just cycle through a few things that you can do at home. Let's go ahead and see hook. Let's see front side round. Double tap round, very nice rear leg round. Very good, one, two. Let's go ahead and cut. Very good, one, two. Cut again, cut again. Very good, one, two. Very nice, okay? So those are different ways that you can use the mitts. Here's a few other techniques that you can do. You can use a ridge hand just like this. High one, high two. We can go hook punch. We can go hook, we can go low to the body. One, two, we can also go uppercut this way, one and two, just like that, okay? So some different techniques that you can work with a partner. Now let's go ahead and take a look at wisdom sticks. So it's basically just your kicking target, and those of you at the dojo know we use this, uh, something to toughen you up, just like this, different parts of your body, but uh, also you wanna use it as uh, what it's intended for, uh, which is a focused target. So he can go ahead and he can do the roundhouse here, he can do it at different levels, just like that. And he's got that nice fast front leg, so many of you guys want to have that nimble front leg. It's a great way to do it. Let's go ahead and check rear leg round as well. So we can do it here, just like that. We can go high, just like this. We can also do rear leg hook this way. He can go with a spinning hook. He can switch his stance. He can work some of the techniques on the other side. So he can work his other leg here. He can go spinning hook. He can switch again. He can continue to use it front leg roundhouse, just like this. He can put it low. All right, so you can really work your agility with these different tools. So I hope this helps. If you don't have one at home, it's okay. You can still cycle through these movements without it, but I know many of you guys have these tools at home. So you can team up with somebody and uh, you can get your workout in. I hope this helps. Thank you, Justin, for helping us out today. I'll see you guys next time.